Sankofa bird, the mythical bird mm -hmm. who flies forward while he's looking backwards at the past. And of course, it would be hard to argue with uh, the people who say, you can't really have a future unless you know what your past has been. Okay. And so, privately, personally, what I came up with was a, a two-year two period of writing columns for the African Times newspaper oh. in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. publisher, Mr. Charles Ann Cham. <clears throat> I'll show you right ahead, right off the top. Uh, Charles Ann Cham was a really, really great guy to work with. We had differences of opinion, but that's what happened between opinionated people. In any case, what he did was give me an opportunity to write about an Africa that I just returned from. The first column that I wrote was in, uh, this is the way I'm going to be doing it. I'll be pulling up these columns. Most of them have been typed. Uh, this was in March 1996. I came back from a three year stay in, in uh, Ghana. F, uh, from 92 to 95. So, like uh, a few months after I returned, somehow or other, I can't keep trying to remember how it happened, but that doesn't matter. I, I was introduced to Mr. Anchan. He, he uh, invited me to write a column for the newspaper, and he had one stipulation, is that it would be African-oriented. I had no problem with that. And we started doing our work together. I wrote for two years, and the stack of columns that I'm going to read over the course of the next month will tell you a little bit about, well, hopefully quite a lot about, what the state of the world was like between 96, 97, and 98. Late 96, 97, 98. Unfortunately, a lot of the events that were occurring then seem to be reoccurring right now. Uh, the only difference is that there's more steroidal intake than there was then. Oh, you wanted me to remind you something about your sister you wanted to say before you got into reading about the times. You said something you wanted to, I don't know, shout out at your sister or... Oh. Did I did I not say yes, you said happy that. birthday to my sister? What's your name? Did I not say that at the beginning of this thing? No, you didn't. I bend on I I I on bended knee. Uh -huh. I beg her to accept my apologies for not opening this up with Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Louise. Happy birthday to you. Incidentally, I'm writing a piece about you. I'm calling it Louise the Great. Louise the Great. Louise the Great. And what's her last name? Hawkins. I'm, I'm, I'm part. Price. Price. Louise Price. Okay. I always think of it as Hawkins because... Uh, she's your baby sister. Well, she's my sister. Okay. All right. On to the African Times. Uh, you just saved my... My face. Well, you said to remind you. And my ear, my ear, my, yes, ear, my yes, back, okay, and everything. Definitely. You mustn't forget, Louise. 
Uh, anyway, these are articles for the African Times. And at some point, I'll hold one of the covers of the Times newspaper up, but I won't do it immediately because I'd like to have you intrigued. In the first issue... Oh, and that popping noise is the fireplace, if anyone wants to know. That popping noise is my brain going off. Don't worry <laughs> about it. Don't listen to her. He says, as the publisher, Columnist Odie Hawkins starts a new hard-hitting section to watch all the misinformation about Africa and the diaspora as carried in the U.S. press. The opener on page 9 is aptly entitled, We'll Play the Devil's Advocate. This is the way we opened it up. Mm -hmm. As most of the regular readers of the African Times already know, our paper has often devoted columns to a close look at the media, print, television, movies, Media Watch, the brainchild of editor-in-chief Charles Anchiam and writer Odie Hawkins, yours truly, will set a more deliberate course to study analyze and or praise the media as it relates to Africa and the diaspora. We will be going from the radio to the latest website offering provocative information, creative insights, educational conduits, and a better understanding of how the big picture and smaller impacts our perceptions of world events. Why is Africa only given marginal attention ordinarily and granted major league status for catastrophes, coups, wars, and famines? It might be too simplistic to suggest American media is only interested in African disasters, but a careful study of the Los Angeles Times, for example, seem to confirm these suspicions. Many might like to point a, pure, a purient finger at racism. Purient, P-U-R-I-E-N-T, nasty finger. They may be right. Brain went off again. <laughs> we'll look at that possibility from different angles. Perhaps newspapers are programmed to focus on day-to-day -day tragedies rather than long-range themes. It's quite obvious that most American newspapers feel they've done enough African stuff since Mandela's election to the South African presidency. Of course, there's never enough OJ updating. Remember, now, we're talking about 1996. TV's recent regurgitation of so-called black programs offers us, unfortunately, too much chewing gum for the eyeball. We will offer praise for well-written, substance-laden programs and give constructive criticism to those that pander to the lowest comedies, the lowest common denominators, films rather than movies, and the essentials to creating excellent films will be discussed. For definitive purposes, a movie can be cloned as a car on an assembly line. Films, as opposed to movies, cannot be cloned. We will never have a, more, uh, have a genre called <clears throat> Nothing But a Man, or Sankofa, or Malcolm X, or Oh, God, you are just going on and on. A film is like a fingerprint. It cannot be duplicated a la Rocky, 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 Rocky. I hope we all get the point here. Yes. We will be examining the journalistic apartheid that has 
persistently ruled out reviews of African American classical music, jazz, by African American reviewers. What about restaurant reviewers? We Thai food too. No major African American drama critics in our city. Huh? No major commentator on the state of African American political affairs. Well, okay, you have the simple, but Jesse Jackson's come close, but he doesn't appear on a daily basis. No sports columnists, no journalistic oppress, no dance company reviewers, no movie film reviewers, critics, no African American perspectives on what is happening in Europe, the Middle East, Far East, South America, the Caribbean. We all live there. <laughs> Our diaspora has taken us to all those places. We all live there. Why shouldn't we have some people who are related to us comment about what it is that's happening to us in those places? Some will argue that we haven't had arbiters of our cultural contributions to this society because they weren't there. They are and have been there, but their voices have been artificially muted. Media Watch proposes to be a devil's advocate. We will not claim to have all the answers. We may have only a few answers, but we will definitely make every effort to arouse as many pertinent questions as possible. That was my opening column, and I'm guilty of it, and I stand by it, and that's that. I hear you, so I want to pause, and I accept it. <laughs> Column number two. I'm sure a lot of people here who remember something about uh, right-wing politics, we will call, there used to be a guy named Buchanan, Pat Buchanan. This was April 1996. Like millions of other Americans, I first caught it on CNN, I watched the scenario of the South Carolina State Trooper pulling the sister over, Dateline, NBC, 10 p.m., March 19, 1996. Horribly fascinated. He approached the vehicle with his with his weapon drawn, screaming, <laughs> screaming in his crudest Marine Corps drill sergeant voice, ordered her out of a vehicle. Incredibly, he recorded his own violent, crazy behavior on his patrol car video. Was he in search of some kind of negative starter? What follows can only be described as the kind of racist horror movie that many African Americans have rebelled about against for many years. The woman was pulled from the vehicle, roughly pushed to the pavement, and raped by a 200 pound madman in a South Carolina state trooper's uniform in full view of passing motorists and ultimately millions of people around the world. I'm sure that Few of the motorists who whizzed by had to be African Americans. In a more together time, a bunch of them might have paused to inquire about what was happening. It took me a few astounded moments to realize that the woman was being raped. I'm sure she reached that conclusion much sooner. The rape was symbolic. The big guy mounting the woman to put handcuffs on her submissive wrists but it was total rape, nevertheless. All of the elements were there, the rapist using his authority as a power tool, the crude language under the color of authority, which continued on the soundtrack after the victim was shoved out of 
camera range. I can't recall a so-called suspect being so badly mistreated, not even on cops, a program that documents police criminal confrontations nightly on TV. The abused woman was locked up in this small South Carolina jail and managed to escape with the aid of the NAACP after a period of time that must have seemed like eons to her. In the interview section of the program, an opportunity to give an objective look at both sides of the story, the trooper argued that there was no racism involved. In a crocodile teared minute, he tried to assure the world it was not really the beast that was captured on video. NBC Dateline in caps. Leaning over forward to be objective, showed excerpts from letters of recommendation that had been written in the trooper's favor over the years. I couldn't bring myself to imagine that any African American were included in letters to explain how much they loved the way he dissed them. Perhaps there was a sarcastic note or two. Dear Officer So and So, I can't begin to tell you how much we appreciate that kick you planted in Kwame's bottom. It really straightened him out. He hasn't gone 10 miles above the speed limit since his encounter with you. Police images flooded my brain for a few hours. Selma, Birmingham, during Bull Connor, uh, uh, Bull Connor, Bull Connor, yeah, Bull Connor's Bull Pit Terrier Sally Jays. The Watch Rebellion that most mainstreamers still call a riot the Chicago Democratic Convention. Stupid questions from an interviewer who asked a number of intelligent questions. Do you think he would have jumped on your back if you had been white? My daughter, Adesina, well acquainted with Southern macho racist police behavior, keel over with sarcastic laughter. I dropped prone and felt my jaw drop. What do you think he was thinking about when he slammed his hat on your car top? For the uninitiated, please remember it's all on compulsively recorded video. Images that turn and burn. Yes, of course, it's the macho chauvinism in me that feels outraged by this treatment the sister received, it would be emotional fraud to suggest otherwise. But what about the hundreds, maybe the thousands, who drove past the scene? No one stopped. Ending on an up note, the police chief of the place where this infamous business took place when asked what he would do about others with similar mentalities made it quite clear that they would be zapped just the way the other guy was zapped. The police chief's name was not Buchanan. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of the columns mm -hmm. with the African Times. Mm -hmm. And there are others. As I fall back to pages of history mm -hmm. to bring you up to date, as the little bird said, I'm flying forwards and looking backwards. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. All right. Once again, coming from Cafe Zola. Cafe right. Zola. They serve the very best orange juice in this place. When you see me sipping this, I know a lot of people think it's some sort of alcohol to drink. But really it's not. This is... Uh, Jamaica uh, ginger beer. Ah, uh, yes. And uh, Ooh, thank you, strong. magnificent storyteller.
Odie Hawkins. Website, www.odiehawkins.com. Glad that you were able to stop by Zola's Cafe. Your books can be purchased on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Archway, um, or just go to your local bookstore, say you want a book by Odie Hawkins, and they can order it for you. And with that, we'll see you tomorrow. Next time, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Ciao.